Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Audrey Zorik, Director of Kids Connection right here at Vallejo Drive Church. We want to welcome you to another Kids Connection program. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. And if this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program. And if you are a regular, we want to welcome you back. It's so good to have you worshiping with us today. Now, every Sabbath we get together, we talk, we have different topics, we sing different songs, we learn different things about God. And, that. and today, we have something very special for you, as always. Now, to get this program started, I'm going to invite you to stand up. Let's sing our song of the day. It's a very happy song. You guys know this song because we sang this song before, right here at Kids Connection. Let's get our Kids Connection program started. Sing with us. Wow, that was a fun and exciting song, wasn't it? Oh my goodness, I can sing this song all day. It's such an energetic song. Don't forget to come back during the week and check on our website down below where we're going to post this song for you so you can come back and keep listening to this song all week because there's a whole lot of change coming your way. Great. If you just sang that song with us, now I invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus and invite him to be a part of our program today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day here at Kids Connection. We ask that you be with us today as we worship your name. Be with every child that are participating and are watching and mom and dad that are watching with them at home. Protect them, keep them safe as we worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now we're going to listen to our story of the missionaries and we're going to participate of our offering together. However, before we go there, I want to share something with you. You know that Kid has been coming out and Kid is visiting some kids throughout the week, right? Okay. Well, I'm excited to let you know that Kid is going to visit Two more kids this afternoon, okay? So, kids, you know who sent us an email earlier this week and who contacted us for a kid to come by and visit you. 
So get ready. There's one child right here in Glendale, and there's another child in L.A. Actually, three kids in L.A. We're coming to visit you this afternoon. And to, excuse me, next Sabbath, we're going to show you uh, videos and pictures of the kids that we went to visit right here on our Kids Connection program. Now, last week and every week, we've been hearing about stories where the missionaries and what we are sending our money to support and what our money is supporting in other places of the world, right? Like last week, we learned about Spain. Well, today we're going to take another trip, another place in the world. Pay attention and let's watch our missionary stop story today. When doctors told Resta he had type 2 diabetes, he didn't know exactly what to do. He was immediately put on three medications and none of them seemed to help. Eventually, Resta visited a nearby Adventist healthcare clinic. At the clinic, they taught me how to change my lifestyle, and since then, I don't take any medication. I eat a vegan diet, and I work out a lot. Resta's health transformation inspired him to attend the Adventist University in Hungary to get certified in lifestyle consultation. Because I have diabetes, I really want to help other people with this disease. That's my motivation. Today, Resta is the coordinator of a global mission urban center of influence in Debrecen, the second largest city in Hungary. This center provides a number of services, including assault room, therapeutic massage, medical advice for asthma and lung problems, and grief and addiction counseling. From the first moment they come here, we tell them everything is based on Christianity. Our base is the Bible. The Christian care and professional services visitors receive encourage them to return for other programs. We are very lucky because God gave us six doctors who are church members and also more than 10 members who are working in the healthcare field. I think it's a good opportunity for us to help people and work together for people. I think it's a very important place because in church we can treat the spiritual health of people. And here, we can treat the body and give them advice about the body. I think this place is like a bridge between the people of the city and the church. This urban center of influence started through total member involvement when Anna Maria decided to open a small bookstore where people could relax, socialize, and browse faith-based books. People don't have proper connections with each other. They are just rushing all the time. We were trying to reach out to those people who didn't have proper and pure connections with others. We wanted to pray with them and for them. Through this ministry, several people have come to know Jesus. When I heard, There's a woman who had several problems and came into the store. I was able to recommend some books and support. We talked, and I invited her to church, and she became a church member. It was like a miracle how much of a loving atmosphere there was. They were very kind to me. They offered for me to sit down and talk with them. I'm very thankful for this center, and I'm thankful I can share my new beliefs and love with others. Another way Adventists spread love is through their annual event called Reach Out with Flowers. Each year, one of the church members grows thousands of daffodils on his land and donates them for all the church members to give out freely in the community. Many people ask why we do this. The answer is simple. Just because we want to show love and be a blessing to people in the city. Adventists and Debrecen are trying to connect with people in creative ways. Whether it's through medical services or partnering in city events, they want to be involved in the community. Please pray that their outreach efforts continue to spread the love of Jesus to the people of this large city. Thank you for supporting Global Mission, which supports projects like these in cities around the world. So good to see where our offerings are going and what people are doing to share the love of Jesus in other places of the world. Thank you so much for supporting the missionaries with your story by clicking on the link just above here and ask your mom and dad to donate to the missionaries. Thank you so much. Now, 
today I'm excited because as every now and then I do something different and we always participate and have different activities, right? Well, today I'm going to invite my daughters, Lanessa and Larissa, to come out here. Come on up. Hello. Awesome. So uh, today we're, they don't know what we're going to do yet. And I'm going to ask you guys at home to try to do this the same way. Okay. So right here, I have a roll of toilet paper. Why do we have a toilet paper right here? And if you guys have an actual toilet paper at home, I invite you to after the program, or you can do this with us. You're more than welcome to ask mom and dad to stand up and you're going to do something fun right now. Okay. So I'm going to hand you this toilet paper. Go ahead and unwrap it. Here we go. Unwrap the toilet paper. All right. You can get rid of this. Here we go. Now, this toilet paper, what I want you two to do between this side and this side, I am not going to move. I'm going to stay right here like a statue and you are going to wrap me with that toilet paper. Are you ready? You think it's going to be fun? I think it's going to be fun. Absolutely. So here we go. They didn't know I was going to ask them to do that. So here we go. Get that toilet paper ready. Open up. It's a brand new toilet paper. All right. So between the two of you, do whatever you want and wrap me as much as you as you want. Okay, so um, better so the kids can see it. It's like from here up. All right, ready, here we go. All right. Are you done? Oh, you're going to tuck it in on the back. Okay. How do I look, boys and girls? How is this? I'm going to turn around so you can see the back. There's the back. Make sure I'm not going to fall. Here's the front. How is this? You think I can... Oh, this... Oh, you're right here. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> here comes part two of my, our experiment and in, in our, our um, little activity here. Now what I want you to do, both of you, you still have the rest of the toilet paper in your hand, right? Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to grab the end of the toilet paper where you tucked it in the back. Okay, you disconnected it, great. Now I want you to roll the entire roll of toilet paper back to its original form. So try the best you can to roll the toilet paper back into the roll as fast as you can. Okay, 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 that's the deal, that's the deal. I'll spin, you roll, I'll spin, you roll. I'm getting dizzy. Are we there, are we there? Are we all rep? All right. So, this is what the toilet paper roll look like after they try to put it back together. It actually does like a ball from a distance. Look at this, it looks like a, a ball. You can't really see what it is. But, anyways, good job, good try. This is what happened. I'm going to explain it to you what happened here. And I want to see if you can do it at home. Are you able to wrap someone with toilet paper or paper towel and then retrieve that paper and put it back to its form without ripping or trying to keep it as a toilet paper and not a ball? Yeah? Okay. As fast as you can. Absolutely. So I want to hear from you. 
try to do this at home, take pictures, take a video, send it to us, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. I want to hear, I want to see what happened with your experience, and I'm going to explain, explain to you what this has to do with our lesson of the day. Good job, girls. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Now, I'm going to ask, uh, uh, actually, let's see if I can do a setup right here. I'm going to bring something from this side, something from this side, and I'm going to uh, raise a little table here. Okay, so our second activity of today, and what I want to share with you guys is this. I want to ask you boys and girls at home. Here I have a jar of water. It's clear water. Here's my little mixing stick. Here you go. It's just water. And here I have three coloring food. They are red, green, and yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix two colors into the water and I want you boys and girls to guess what this is. Okay? What color is going to turn, the water is going to turn. So I'm going to get the red one and I'm going to go with one, two, three drops of red and I'm going to go with one, two, three, oops, four drops of yellow. Now, what color do you think this is going to turn to be? Ready? My mixing stick and there you go. What color is this? It is orange. If you guessed orange, you are absolutely correct. Good job. Now, uh, let's see. I'm going to make another mix. So here we go. I'm going to get a little bit of red. Where's red? Here it comes. Where's red? And I'm going to do one, two, three drops of red. And I'm going to go with one, two, three drops of yellow. Here we go. All right, my mixture is done. Now we have what color? Orange again. Hmm, we have orange again. All right, fine. Let's try something else. I'm going to get the uh, red and I'm going to go with one, two, three drops of red. And I'm going to add, aha, this is this got to make a difference now. And I'm going to add one, two, three drops of the yellow. So, aha, for sure, now this is going to work. My mixing stick, and here it comes. Wait a second. What color is this? Huh? It is orange again. I can't believe it. I mix red and yellow, red and yellow, red and yellow. It was three times and I keep getting orange. Why am I still getting orange? Tell me why. I know you know. Huh. Wait. Could it be because... I am mixing the same colors over and over again. <gasps> I think that's what it was. Now, if I wanted to get a different color than orange, what did I have to do? Oh, I had to mix green. But I didn't see the green because it was hiding behind the jar. I was only able to get the red and the orange, excuse me, and the yellow. And when you mix red and yellow, you get the color orange. But because I did the same thing over and over again, I kept getting the same results. 
Hmm. Okay. What does this have to do with our lesson today? Well, I'm going to tell you. In our Bible study today, in our lesson, in your classroom, you're going to hear a story about some people in the past, from the Bible time. And what happened is that they were doing something that they couldn't reverse it. Do you remember the roll of, pa of toilet paper? Did you see what they did? Were they able to put the toilet paper back to its original format, original roll? No, they couldn't. So these people did something that they could not reverse it. And they kept doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And every time they did that, something happened. You know, boys and girls, sometimes we do the same thing, don't we? We keep doing the same thing and we keep asking for forgiveness and we keep doing the same thing again. Hmm. I wonder what the people from the Bible had to do different. Well, we're about to find out what they had to do different and what they were doing that couldn't be undone because their actions could not be undone and they had we have to think about what we do just like the toilet paper and once you do it we have to be careful because once we do it certain things cannot be undone so pay attention to our story today and as we learn what happened to the people but before we go to our story i'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day one more time there's a whole lot of change coming your way. Let's sing together. There's a whole lot of change coming your way. Cause like it or not, nothing stays the same. So hold on tight and follow real close. God is good and he's in control. Great, 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 awesome, amazing song that we sang together. This was great. And I want to thank you, boys and girls, for singing along, for being a part of our Kids Connection program. Let's go ahead and close our program with a word of prayer. And then I have something else that I want to share with you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, 
thank you so much because we believe in you that you can help us. We believe that there are changes that we need to make. Help us to learn from our story today about the things that we need to do in our lives and in, in, in every day. And uh, as we continue to worship, we ask for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Terrific. I had a lot of fun being a toilet paper mummy <laughs> right here and doing the experiment of the colors that we kept adding the same colors and getting the same result over and over again. I'm looking forward to see what your teacher is going to teach us today in our lesson. Now, I want to tell you uh, something else. I want to talk to you about something else today. This week, this past week now, all over the place, we've had kids, we've had teenagers, we've had young adults, we've had older people that all got something done together. And that is, they graduated. Well, some of them had a graduation. Others graduated from school. If you are not in school yet, it's okay. Don't worry. Very soon you're going to be in school. But today we're going to tell, we're going to talk about a lot of kids. Some of the kids graduated from first grade to second grade, from second to third, from third to fourth, from fourth to fifth, from fifth to sixth, and, and seventh and eighth. And if you were in kindergarten and you finish your kindergarten year today or this week, you celebrate your graduation. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you. I received some information from the parents that their, their children graduated, that you graduated from kindergarten. Others graduated from eighth grade. Some people graduated from high school. And I want to congratulate every one of you. This is, this is a, a, an achievement that you deserve to celebrate. And I'm so happy that you um, got to this point. And I want to ask that God blesses you as you take the next step, as you continue your life from now on. Well, we have something special prepared for you at, at our worship service today at 11 o'clock. Okay? So watch our 11 o'clock worship service. We're, we're going to mention some of the names that graduated. And if you don't see your name or if you don't see someone that you want to recognize, send us an email. Send us their picture. We want to show their picture in our program. So send it to the church, Vallejo at Grace and Condition.com, or you can send it to the kids. Kids Connection uh, program, which is vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. This afternoon, kids coming out. If kid has not been to your house yet to say hello to you from a distance, send us an email. Ask mom and dad, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. Send us your name, your phone number, your address, and we are coming out. I'm going to drive kid to come out and say hi to you at your house. Thank you so much for watching our Kids Connection program today. God bless you. God keeps you safe. Very soon, we're hoping to have you all here so we can worship God together in the name of Jesus. Until then, until next week, I will see you. Be safe. I love you guys. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining. See you next week. Bye-bye. Hi, kids. Good morning. Welcome to our program. Welcome to our Sabbath school this morning. I'm very happy to have you, and I'm glad you can join us this morning. I know it's the beginning of June, so now we have a lot of things to be excited about. We have probably birthdays that are coming up. We have probably summer vacation. You per I hope you guys can have some time in the water, some sunbathing, whatever you guys are going to be doing. I'm really glad that's happening. So if you had a birthday, I want to pray for you so that God can bless your lives and also can be with us this morning. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our God, we are grateful because you have given us so many things because you are very loving with us and you are always ready to help us. Thank you, God, for the birthdays of this month. Thank you for the summer that is coming up. Thank you for the many blessings you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning, like I said, we have a new month. And 
it's a new beginning of a lot of exciting things happening. Do you remember a, pro, a judge? Let me see if you can guess who it was. There was a judge that he was chosen when he was very, very young. I don't know his age. Probably you guys could help me know what his age was. But when he was chosen, he was a young person and he was the only one that trusted God along with another, another person, another one of his friends. So do you know who it was? He was the one that said, oh no, those are not giants. Probably they're big, but God is bigger than us. And he called out for a city and God said, because you trusted in God, you're going to be the leader to surround the city seven times and the walls are going to fall. Now you know who we were talking about? So that is the character of the day. Let me share something with you. Have you ever been told not to do something and you still did it anyway? Huh, sounds familiar? Let's see. Think about some some experience that you've been through and you did something that you shouldn't anyways. So, did you think about something? I know, I have a lot of stories that many times I did something that I shouldn't and I knew that I shouldn't, but I still did it anyways. So, I'm going to ask you this morning to grab your Bible. I have my Bible on my phone, so I'm going to grab my phone. But in your house, you can grab your Bible. And I want you to look for Judges 2. Let's see. If you already guessed who the character of the day was, you probably are going to be familiar with this story. Judges chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and said, I made you to go up to Egypt and have brought you out the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Who is God talking about in these verses? And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Who is God calling to? So that means that someone knew that they shouldn't do something and they did it anyways. So Joshua was the leader of the new Israel. He was the one that entered the promised land. Remember in the stories before we studied about the promised land? how God was going to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and take them to the promised land. So now Joshua is leading out the people and the people needed to throw away the altars of the places that they had conquered. Verse 3 says, Wherefore, uh, wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be snare upon you. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children, verse 6, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And verse 7 says, And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had been all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. So the people of Israel were proving time after time that they, if they obeyed God, God was going to remain faithful to them. Time after time, God delivered them from Egypt. He delivered them from the desert. He took them to the promised land. He helped them conquer anyone that was trying 
to dispose them of the promised land. And time after time, the Israelites forgot that God had been with them and that the only thing God needed from them was obedience. You know, this happens to us a lot. We know everything, we read the Bible, but sometimes there are things in our hearts that tells us to do otherwise. And it happens to me all the times. But you know what? The only thing that we can do is pray to God so that he can be with us. Because the people of Israel went back to their beginnings. And every time they disobeyed, there was a judge that helped them come back to the right path and follow God. It doesn't matter how many times we disobey. It matters that every time we disobey, we come back and ask for forgiveness. And God will take us all the time. You know, there's something that we are not capable of doing, and that is loving how God loves. God will love you anytime, any day. He will love you if you stay with him or if you just decide not to stay with him. That is the love of God. And in past lessons, we learned that if we have loved God, we can share it with people. So this morning, I want to ask you to seek God. The people of Israel knew that they should not have other gods before them, before God, and they would do altars, again, foreign gods, all the time. And then God would need to come in and ask them to remove them again. God is asking you this morning, can you follow me? I have great things for you. Just like he delivered the people of Israel and gave them the promised land. He also wants to give you a promised land. One land that will never disappear and his reign will be forever. Ask God every day to be with you. So sometimes it's hard to stay on God's side. Temptations will come every day, just like for the people of Israel. But if you read chapter 2 of Judges, you're going to discover the amazing things God did for them. After the chapter 2, it comes battle after battle. And every battle was won when they seek God's guidance. Seek God's guidance. Study the book of Judges. You're going to find amazing stories. I invite you this week to look for the book of Judges and study about the battles that the people of Israel were delivered from. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful because this morning we were able to see that you love us, that sometimes we disobey, that sometimes we do not follow your commands, but we know that you are always with us and we know that you will always love us. Help us to have that love and share it with others. Share it with everyone that is around us so that they know that we have the love of God. Thank you very much and we can't wait to see you soon. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you guys had a great week. Bye, I'll see you next time.